हे गाइस व्हाट्स अप वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू बी टॉकिंग अबाउट स्टेडी स्टेट कॉर्नरिंग एंड द कॉन्सेप्ट्स ऑफ न्यूट्रल स्टीयर ओवर स्टीयर एंड अंडर स्टीयर एंड वी विल ट्राई टू मेक इंटूएटिव सेंस ऑफ ऑफ व्हाट ऑल दैट मींस सो लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड सो एज यू कैन सी वी आर डीलिंग विद द बाइसिकल मॉडल ओवर हियर एंड विद दैट हियर गोस सम अजम्पशंस वन ऑफ द अजम्पशन इज वी देयर इज नो लेटर रोड ट्रांसफर व्हेन एवर द व्हीकल इज गोइंग थ्रू अ टर्न देयर इज नो लॉन्जिट्यूडिनल लोड ट्रांसफर the wheels or the tires on the front and rear are exactly the same that is the same lateral force towards the slip angle chart this one over there and we are operating at low speeds that is the linear range where the lateral force varies linearly with the slip angle all right so with the assumptions out of the way let's get started so as you can see this is the vehicle uh, we have center of gravity which is in the dead center of the vehicle length and then the distance of the center of the rear wheel to the center of gravity is b the distance of center of gravity to the front of the wheel is a and now when we are going through this turn as defined by this part so the front wheel is turning in this direction by angle of delta so as whenever we are going through a turn a centrifugal force acts on the center of gravity which pushes it outwards this one so this center of gravity has to be balanced by some force which is balanced by lateral force on the rear and the front thing always think of lateral force from the wheel from the tires acting on the ground as the force by which the tire tries to push the ground backwards or the tarmac backwards the higher the capability of your tire to push the tarmac backwards is greater the grip you have or greater the force you can lay out from your tires on the ground so that's what's going on over here now think about it when we say a vehicle is neutral steer that means that the vehicle turns exactly the same amount by the angle which we are moving our steering wheel with so in this case if you are moving by delta then the vehicle should uh, steer by the amount delta as well now this is the track where we are turning obviously we have the angle delta as we already defined so for the vehicle to be in neutral steer the moment because of the lateral force on the rear and the front should be balanced there's no moment because of the centrifugal force because it's acting on the center of gravity so moment uh, uh, from the rear lateral force should be equal to the moment because of the front lateral force this can be defined by fir times b equals to fyf times a since b and a are the same these both will can cancel out each other and since we have already mentioned that the tires on the front and the rear are exactly the same we also assume that the slip angles generated during the turn are same on the front and rear tires as well so the same lateral force will be generated so fir should be equal to fif therefore moment uh, on the rear axle Uh, about center of gravity is equal to the moment on front axle about the center of gravity so good this is the neutral steer condition but think about it if usually we it's very difficult to get to a neutral steer condition now think when the center of gravity moves little bit closer to the front track like somewhere over here let's assume in that case the distance of the center of gravity from to the center of front wheel becomes 1/3 of the distance of the center of gravity from the center of the rear wheel L let's and this is just an assumption let's assume it's b by 3 right so if you have to rewrite this equation over here it will be fyr lateral force on the rear times b equals to lateral force on the front times b by 3 so now think about it as the center of gravity moves closer to the front wheels we have more added vertical weight on the front wheels or the front tires now these front wheels will generate greater lateral force per degree of slip angle because of the added weight we know how the tire and the tire characteristics work the lateral force versus slip angle this is for one particular added weight if we increase the vertical weight the graph will be like this the decrease vertical weight the graph will be like this for the same tire so fif will increase in that case however the arm length from the pivot decreases 
the rear or lateral force will decrease but the arm length is still the same but a higher value so we can take some imaginative numbers and think about it in a real life condition like if these forces if these two moments balance out with all this change in the center of gravity or not assuming it doesn't and we have a higher uh, lateral force on the rear then what happens like uh, our higher moment on the front because of the increased lateral force so the vehicle will have a tendency to rotate in this direction because the turning effect of force lateral force f is higher therefore it will try to move apply a torque uh, torque on the rear wheel like this this means the vehicle will be oversteering so in order to prevent the vehicle from oversteering what can we do right now we have the same wheel so we have the same performance for the lateral force versus the slip angle in that particular case what can be done is the center of gravity cannot be changed in real life applications so we can add a high performance tire on the rear that is or a wider tire on the rear which gives us higher lateral force generation for a small amount of slip or comparatively small amount of slip angle that way we will increase the lateral force value over here and therefore increasing our overall moment at the rear wheel about the center of gravity and therefore balancing these two out conversely think about if the center of gravity moves somewhere closer to the rear track and then in that case this thing is not valid and let's reverse the numbers b equals to a by 3 when b equals to a by 3 the values change now a lateral force at the rear will increase by default because of the added vertical weight but the arm length goes down to a by 3 the lateral force on the front will go down but the arm length is still the same but higher compared to this one now again we need to understand with us some numbers and we can work on it but if overall lateral force at the rear is higher or the moment on the rear wheel is higher compared to the front one after the movement of the center of gravity towards the rear then we'll have a torque which will act like this and try to move the vehicle like this so what does that mean when we have a track we are going trying to go through a circular direction like this and our vehicle is like this trying to go like this a torque acts like this in this direction and tries to move our vehicle on this direction that means we our vehicle will have a tendency to understeer in this case now think about it like moment on the rear is pushing us because we are not able to generate enough lateral force on the front if we generate enough lateral force that means we have enough force on our front tires intuitively think about it on the front tires our rubber have enough force to push the road with that effect so that we can move in that direction that's not happening in case of understeer and therefore we won't follow the track and we have to overcompensate with our steering wheel to go in that particular direction not go straight so i hope you understand understood the concept of neutral steer oversteer and understeer you got the concept behind it and how to tackle those situations in real life scenarios if you have any questions comments or concerns please leave them in the comment section below and i'll see you all in the next video see ya